It sounds like Texas A&M is going to hire Mike Elko to be the next head football coach. How do we feel about this? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. So, everything I have seen, it's not officially, official yet. I'm recording this at 7 o'clock on Sunday night, so it's not official yet. After the Stoops incident, which we'll talk about in segment two, you know, I want to clarify that. But it sounds like Mike Elko is going to be Texas A&M's next head football coach. How do we feel about this? That is the question. How do we feel about this? And I look at it and I go, you know, I think I was a little bit negative talking about the name Mike Elko earlier when we were deciding who's going to be the next head coach. Um, I, I just looked at it like I think there were some names that you could have brought on that would have had, would have had me more excited than Mike Elko, and I still feel that way. I think the fan base as a whole, I think the fan base was a bit – what's the word? I think people were a little more 50-50, kind of like I'm pro-Elko, I'm pro- anti-Mike Elko, and then – now it seems to be moving more in the direction that people are excited for Mike Elko to be the next head football coach at Texas A&M. So to me, this is interesting. It was an interesting hire. And I, I, you look at Mike Elko's numbers, and the numbers are great. You know, as a head coach, D.C. has done a good job where he's been as a D.C. My concern is this, and it's one that I have laid down for about a week now. Whenever Coach Fisher was fired, it was after, yeah, about a week now. I have said, I am concerned that you don't want to make a risky hire. I think that, now you can argue today, you can say, well, Andrew, who could you have hired that wouldn't have been a risky hire? And I think that's a fair point. I think that really is a fair point. I think most everybody would, would be somewhat risky. I mean, there's not anybody you can say that guy's going to be a home run for sure. But I think there are more proven head coaches whose names were kind of floating around. You got to remember, like, let's go ahead before we get more in this conversation, let's run through Mike Elko's stuff as a coach. So, and we start, you know, he had lots of positions elsewhere, but we're going to start at his DC days. He was a DC at Hofstra, he was then a DC at Bowling Green, a DC at Wake Forest. And then a DC at AM from 18 to 21. <coughs> Excuse me, you got a bit of a cold going on right now. But 18 to 21, he is the DC at Texas AM. He then takes the job over at Duke. What does he do at Duke? You might ask. Okay. Well, this first season there, he goes nine and four. Second season there, which would be this season, he goes seven and five. Now, I'm not one for making a ton of excuses when it comes to injured players because look at all of the quarterbacks that have been injured for Texas A&M for years and years and years and years and years. Every quarterback gets hurt. So Mike Elko taking over this job, buddy, you got to know you're going to have a play. You're going to have a quarterback go down with injury at some point. So, but his quarterback, Riley Leonard, got banged up this year. He would be start games and get hurt and leave the game or miss games completely or play through an injury. He was banged up most of the year. When he was healthy, they were awesome. He was banged up, and then the season kind of fell off a little bit. And, you know, but still 7-5 and five with an injured quarterback. I think you can argue maybe if he's not injured, you win a couple of those ball games, and they're looking at a different season, you know. So I know it's not a long career as a head coach, second season doing it, but back-to-back seasons that I think you can live with. I think the seven to five, once again, I'm not throwing it out because of the quarterback, but I'm definitely going to say, you know, put an asterisk around it. His quarterback was hurt a lot. That's my thoughts there when it comes to 
um, his season at Duke last year. But the question now kind of is, how do I feel about this hire? And golly, I tell you, I have gone back and forth and back and forth on my thoughts on this hire for so long today. Like when I heard that it was somewhat, he it was going to be Elko, you know, I floated. I was like, at first, when at first, like, you know, five days ago, I was kind of like, eh. And then I was kind of like, okay, you know, I talked myself in and out of it. And now I'm in a spot right now where th- I think these are my thoughts. I'm trying to find a way to explain it. And I think the way I would sum up my thoughts on Mike Elko being Texas A&M's next head coach is as follows. I think that it's a risky hire. It is a risky hire, but I think he can succeed. I believe in him defensively. I believe that he can recruit. I believe that he can make the right decision when it comes to an offensive coordinator that will lead to success on the offensive side of the football. Developing talent is going to be interesting. You know, I I don't think he was at Duke long enough to really speak, you know, on his developing talent when it comes to being a uh, coach, you know, because he wasn't there all that long to really kind of have the conversation of like, can this guy develop four and five star talent? You know, he 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 didn't have the talent at Duke. He's going to have a Texas A and M. There's no question about that. But, um, you know, I, I think can he develop talent it is a question I have. It's one I have. It would be interesting to see. Now, I mean, I, I, we know that he developed players while at Texas A and M, but you got to do it more as a whole when you're the head coach rather than just being the defensive minded guy. So talent development is going to be interesting, but I just think, like I said, at the end of the day, Mike Elko can succeed at Texas A&M. There's no doubt in my mind. I just think it's a little bit risky. Simple as that. That's my whole take on it. I'm not bashing the hire. Um, I think Mike Elko can be successful. I've seen a lot of people excited. And you know who else I've seen excited? Some current players on the roster. And that means a lot to me. You know, I think you learn a lot about a coach based on players' thoughts on the players' amount of respect for them. Everything I've seen from some Texas A&M players that have been around for a little while, you know, maybe back when Elko was there, seem to be incredibly excited that he's coming back to College Station to be the head football coach. And, you know, that means a lot to me. And also, add on top of that, like, maybe that means he's going to get some of the current roster to stick around. We'll talk about that more in segment three. But all in all, Looking at this, summing this up, my thoughts are as follows. I think that Mike Elko can succeed at Texas a but I do think he has to do a few things right. I do think he's got to do a good job hitting the portal. I think he's got to use the portal well. I think he's got to do a good job developing highly ranked players. I think he's got to have a home run higher when it comes to offensive coordinator. And the offensive coordinator will be a discussion we have a ton here on the show. Um. But that'll all be interesting to see how it pans out there. I'm um, intrigued to see just how this works as a whole. I I agree it's risky, and that's my thought. I think Mike Elko's a good football coach. He's a good defensive mind. I think he can succeed. Uh, He's never been a head coach in the SEC. How's he going to adapt to that? But he has coached in the SEC. Some of the candidates that I kind of liked more so than Mike Elko were guys that – I kind of looked at it and I went, you know, eh, I don't know. They don't have much experience in the SEC. Elko has that experience in the SEC. He has experience, you know, he was at AM. He's been in the SEC as a DC. He's been in the ACC as a um, defensive coordinator and now you know, a head coach. And so um, I think that he has experience. He just doesn't have head coaching experience in the SEC. And that is why I say, I think this hire is just a little bit risky. Not super risky, just a little bit risky. And risky was kind of what I was trying to avoid. But then the more you kind of look back on it, I think to myself, like, who could you have hired that wouldn't have been risky? You know, so Mike Elko can succeed at Texas A&M. When I first saw the news, I was kind of like, ah, but I've thought more about it. And I lean toward, I think he can do it. I think he can succeed. I think he's got to he's got to work hard. He's got to keep recruiting well. He's got to develop talent. He's got to make some good hires. But this guy, Mike Elko, can succeed as Texas A&M's next head football coach. Now we're going to talk a little bit about this coaching search as a whole because it was a weird one. 
a lot of weird stuff, a lot of phone calls we weren't expecting, names float in, names float out. We're going to talk about it coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I got to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is one of my favorite companies, one of my favorite apps. And the reason that is, is because they're in the business of saving you money. A lot of their competitors are, are, are just looking for some moolah. They're looking for money. They're looking to make some cash off tickets and spike prices. That's not what Game Time wants to do. Game Time is in the business of saving people money, getting people to the events that make them happy at the right price. You know, ball games, concerts, comedy venues, we go to those things as humans to laugh and have a good time and spend time with friends, family, loved ones. And, you know, you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on events like that. And Game Time makes sure that's not the case. I love Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. So back to this coaching search and kind of what was weird about it, in and out. I kind of look at this coaching search and there were so many names. You know, I feel like when it, when, when Coach Fisher first got let go, it was just, you know, a couple Sundays ago or Sunday ago, the first couple names was, oh, Dan Lanning, DeBoer from Washington, right? Those were the two quick names. And then it kind of seemed like, well, Lanning's off the table. He shut that down pretty quick. So then it was like, okay, DeBoer, great. We'll go get the war that, um, you know, that kind of, and he, he floated around a lot longer than Dan Lanning's name did, but didn't sound like there was really any chance at that. Then came the Mike Elko and the Jeff trailer names kind of floating around. They, of course, that doesn't really turn into much of anything at first. And then, Oh, Ryan day and Davo Sweeney and all these names start floating around and you go, huh? Maybe it's one of those guys. People start to get excited. Maybe a Ryan day. And then last night, Mark Stoops kind of – you heard his name a little bit. Like people have kind of said, eh, Mark Stoops, maybe, yeah, no. It had floated around, but there wasn't any real likelihood that it was going to happen, I think. I mean, at first, I thought that. At first, I thought, I don't think Stoops is going to get this job. That was my kind of initial reaction to that news. And then, of course, what goes on after that? Then – it becomes, oh, Stoops is getting this job. Stoops is going to be the next head football coach at Texas A&M, right? That happens, and you go, oh, what? And it's funny. I was actually out with some buddies uh, downtown. I got some friends in town that are that work um, out of town now, and we're out having a good time. And then I see that news. I'm like, I got to go home. I got to work. I get home. I start I start getting a little work done, and then I look, and, and an hour later, it's like, oh, never mind. Mark Stoops is saying in Lexington, and he's not going to Texas A&M. And I'm like, what? Like, I've never seen a coaching search – go so back and forth so many times. It was just, this was a really interesting, just everything that went down about this coaching church was interesting. And then, of course, after that all happens, we find out today that Mike Elko is the next head coach at Texas A&M. Once again, that's not, as of right now, that's not official official, but it feels much more official than what happened with Stoops. So, you know, I think kind of what, to me, was interesting in this hire was – I kind of look at this and I go, who did they swing and miss on? Because the other name, you know, they were – I think when they paid that buyout to Coach Fisher, and this was something my dad and I talked about a ton, we, we kind of sat and we said, you know, if they're paying this huge buyout, if they're saying we're going to pay you over 75 77 whatever million dollars to not be our head football coach, I figured they had a home run hire in mind. Somebody who was going to come in, get everybody excited – and lead, lead, you know, get some win quickly, develop, recruit. I thought that's kind of be what you were looking at. You that would be what you were looking at. And then as you started to hear, like, well, Dan Lanning's not interested, and oh, you called uh, Dan Gamble, and he didn't, he doesn't have any interest. He's happy in Detroit. That stuff started to happen, and you kind of started to go like, ooh, ooh, what's uh, what's what's going on here? What's the plan here? What are we going to do now? Um, and I think that happened a little bit. So. I guess what I'm kind of getting at, and it's it's back to the conversation I had a minute ago in regards to risky, to being risky. 
I thought that Texas A&M was going to make a hire that was just a little bit less risky than the one they made. And then this hire, of course, was risky. I think it is. And once again, I know I said it in segment one, but like you could always argue, well, Andrew, what hire would you make that wouldn't be risky? And I, I don't disagree with that. I just think there were there'd be at least a few names that were a little safer, just a little safer than the ones that were floated that you know started to float around. Um, so I, I think that you know I think that like this is the question, and I want to pose this to every listener, everybody in here, every every day or new people listening because of the new coach being here. This is the question I want to throw out to y'all. Do you think Mike Elko? We'll either say top three or top five. We'll say top five for the argument. When they got rid of J- uh, Jimbo Fisher, was was Mike Elko a top five candidate for this job? I think that top five, you can convince me. Top three, I don't think so. I really don't. I think they were interested in in a you know Ryan Day floated around, Dan Campbell, Dan Lanning, Kalen DeBoer. Those names are the ones that were floating around. So to me, it was kind of like, did they swing and miss a whole bunch and then kind of just go get who they could? Or was Mike Elko a name that they really wanted? Obviously, Mike Elko has connections to Texas A&M. He was the D.C. under Coach Fisher. He's been around. You know, there's connections there, which is very important. But I guess, you know, that's my my thought here is like how – how – where was he in their initial rankings? Like if Ross Bjork wrote down a list of top 10 names, where would Mike Elko have been? He'd of course been in the top 10, but would he have been seven? Would he have been six? Would he have been three? Would he have been five? That's what I, I'd be curious to know. Did they swing and miss a whole bunch before they ended up landing on Mike Elko? Um, and like, then like Mark Stoops, where was his name on that list? Was his name really there? But then they swung and missed him. And, and that's what kind of makes me wonder, like them pushing hard after Mark Stoops is what kind of makes me wonder, like, where was Mike Elko's name on this on this list? Um, I think that we'll never know that. I don't think I don't think Ross Bjork. I mean, I'd love to be able to ask him that question. I don't think we'll ever really find a genuine answer to that. But I would really like to know where were those guys? Where where it, where was there a list? You know, like in that movie where um, Kevin Costner's the GM for the Browns and he's got the piece of paper and it's like this guy or you know like. Did Ross Bjork have a list and it was, these are my guys. How did that go down? I'd be really curious to know, but it was an interesting coaching search. A lot of roller coaster, a lot of up and down, a lot of he's the guy, he's not the guy, he's the guy. It was an interesting one, to say the least. It was a very interesting coaching search. And I'm happy it's over. I'm happy we have our next head coach at Texas A&M, assuming this all does uh, become official. And likely the time we're, we're watching this in the morning, I'm sure it will be, but um, that's an interesting point. So now – we're going to move on to segment three, and we're going to talk a little bit about the D.C. Familiar name. Somebody's sticking around. Why that is so important for recruiting the current roster and recruiting the 2024 class going forward, and then a little bit about the O.C. and, and why that needs to be a home run hire for Mike Elko in this staff. We'll talk about that all coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I use FanDuel. Just compared to all of their competition, I think FanDuel is the easiest to use. They have the best uh, lines. I, I love the way their app is um, constructed. I love everything about FanDuel. It's an easy-to-use app. It's where I um, sports bet. I highly recommend it if you don't have it. Visit FanDuel.com slash college and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So now the conversation is going to be here of, you know, the D.C., it's being reported that Mike Elko, the plan is to keep Elijah Robinson, of course, the interim head coach when they let go of Coach Fisher, to keep Elijah Robinson on staff as the defensive coordinator. Now, you got to remember, 
Elko is a defensive mind. So what that means is they're going to have, you know, put their two heads together and break all this stuff down. But um, yeah, it sounds like Elijah Robinson is going to be around to, to, to be the DC. You'll have two defensive, great defensive minds being able to talk back and forth, which is going to be great for this roster. Um, Coach Robinson is going to get a raise, it sounds like, which is great, good for him. He earned it. He deserves it. But I think the best part about all this, the best part to me about Coach Robinson sticking around is recruiting this current roster and recruiting this current class. You know, we've heard about the transfer portal. It sounds like Evan Stewart might move on. Obviously, there's nothing official there. I'm sure he wanted to wait and see who the next coach is, so a decision might be coming soon for that. But, you know, who's going to leave? Who's going to stay? I think if Coach Elko can salvage this current roster and this recruiting class, with Texas A&M being the number five team when it comes to blue, uh, blue chip ratio, if they can make it to where they're the number five team in blue chip ratio once the season ends, or I mean once next season starts, if they're top ten, I think that's realistic. And so what I'm kind of arguing here is you're not going to keep everybody around. You're not going to be able to have every single player on this roster stick around. Some guys are going to leave. It's going to happen. We all need to accept that. But what we can do, the conversation that we can have is, can you salvage this roster enough to a point where you can genuinely compete in 2024? One of the reasons when hot seat rumors you know, were floating around with Coach Fisher that I was such a big believer in, let's keep him around for 2024, was because of uh, this schedule I think is just so manageable in 2024. Your two really difficult couple of games are at home. Your road games are winnable. I feel really good about the spot that Texas A&M, Texas A&M is in next year schedule-wise to where, you know, maybe Coach Richard could have made a run. They, of course, do decide to let him go and pay the buyout. And, and the reason I, I was kind of leaning against that was when you when a coach goes and you bring in a new coach, players leave, players come in, all this and that, so you have a lot of back and forth. You have a lot of who's going to be the guy, um, you know, what players are going to come in and be relevant, who's going to be our quarterback, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. So I think that, you know, bringing a new coach, it's going to be hard to maintain a, your roster as a top five when it comes to blue chip ratio. But if you can keep it at top ten, I think Coach Elko can compete immediately with that. I think he could go nine and three or eight and four, you know, in that range with a miracle maybe ten and two with a top 10 blue chip ratio roster, um, just based on, I think he's a good football coach. I think he can do it. That's why it's so important. And I think that's why keeping coach Elijah Robinson on staff as your defensive coordinator is so important because of the relationships he has with this roster, with these players, with these recruits. He's great about all of it. He's a guy that had to stick around. You're able to make it happen. It sounds like coach Robinson's going to stay around as the DC, get a raise, him and Coach Elko will be able to go back and forth, talk in and share ideas on defense. That's a big deal. I think that's going to help with this roster. But, like, one thing we saw, Terry and York tweeted. I saw a tweet from him. He's excited that Coach Elko is making the move to Texas A&M. This is a big deal. I mean, York is a player. I, I wouldn't have been surprised to see, you know, with him being a freshman, him move on. But it sounds like he, he's gonna, he might stick around now. He seems excited, and that is so important. Keeping players on this roster – being able to keep the talent that you have to stick around in College Station, play for Coach Elko, play for the Aggies for the rest of their college football career is so important. And that's why I think Eliza Robinson being kept on staff as the D.C. is going to be such a big deal for this football team. Um, two little notes. I think that the offensive coordinator hire is going to be so important because with you know Robinson and Elko both being defensive guys, you can't swing and miss when it comes to the defensive coordinator. I mean, the offensive coordinator, you have to make the right hire. It's got to be a guy that can come in and succeed, draw up good offenses, hopefully for quarterback Connor Wigman, you know, assuming uh, Wiggs doesn't go anywhere, um, that can come in and draw up good plays, draw up a great offense that can succeed in the SEC. Um, hopefully it's somebody proven. That, that made me feel a lot better too, because we know that Coach Elko has proven he's a good defensive mind. Can he prove that you know he makes the right hire on OC, a, a proven defensive mind and a proven offensive coordinator. Can they work well together and really succeed for Texas A&M next season and for the foreseeable future? That is what is important to me. So the hire of the offensive coordinator is going to be massive. 
I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't. Will it be a day or two? Will it be four or five? It'll be interesting. I think it'll be a little while, but it's, it's going to be a fun thing to speculate and discuss here, just like we have with the coaching hires or with the head coach hire. Um, and then last thing, quarterback Max Johnson entered his name in the transfer portal. Max, thank you for everything. You know, I mean, through what he dealt with, he was in and out of the lineup, got banged up all year. He's getting hammered because the offensive line struggles. Um, I appreciate Max and his time at Texas A&M. I, I don't think he's the starter next year with assuming Wigman is back and then assuming Henderson's back, but what he looked like over the last few weeks. So, you know, Max Johnson, he can use his grad year and go find somewhere to play. I think he's going to find the power five place to a power five place to play and be a really good quarterback for somebody. So best of luck to Max. Best of luck to Coach Elko as he looks for an OC. And best of luck to Coach Robinson as he takes over his new role and his pay upgrade. So congrats to all those guys. Really excited about the future of Texas A&M football. Everybody in the comments, let me know y'all's thoughts on this hire. I'm very anxious to hear everybody's opinions. Let me know in the YouTube comments how you feel about it, positive or negative, either way. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you so much for tuning in, talking about our new head football coach. I really appreciate it. We will see you tomorrow to talk more about Coach Elko and who's going to be around them, who's going to stick around. We'll have all of that coverage going forward over here at Locked on Aggies. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.